Welcome to our virtual presentation of our Women in Sport Day celebration. This is our first virtual presentation because I believe last year's celebration might have been the last in-person event we hosted. Who would know? I want to extend a special welcome to some important audience guests. Our president, Patrick Leahy, the board of trustee chairwoman, did you hear the woman part? Gina Piscatelli, and members of the board, Jack Conover, Mike Plodwick, and Tom Perskevis. Thank you also to Provost Ray Kadata, faculty athletic representative, Jen McGovern, and Zanetta Rago Kraft, the advisor to the president on diversity and inclusion. Heads up, the event is being recorded for our archives. I would also like to sincerely thank our hosts, hosts Morgan Stanley and artist Senior Living. Girls and Women in Sport Day was started in 1987. This is the 35th national celebration of the day, the 23rd official celebration at Monmouth University. This year's theme for the National Women in Sport Day is Lead Her Forward. Women in Sport Day was named after Flo Hyman. She was a role model and star in the sport of volleyball. She testified in 1984 for the Civil Rights Restoration Act. She appeared in the 64 and the 68 Olympics in which the team did poorly. They failed to qualify in 72 and 76. The Olympics were boycotted in 1980, but they finally medaled in 1984. Talk about tenacity and perseverance. She is one of the most charismatic athletes this country ever produced, rail thin and tall, and a smile that energized an arena. Often called the mother of Title IX, Patsy Mink, a senator from Hawaii, co-sponsored the law. She had a lifelong dream of becoming a medical doctor and had taken many pre-med courses, graduating from the University of Hawaii in 1948. Shocked, she was told by a dozen medical schools that she could not be accepted because she was female. Instead of medical school, she worked at te testing syrup for canned pineapples and typing for the Air Force. She was mentored by a Caucasian woman who told her not to de be defeated and to become a lawyer. She applied at the University of Chicago. They said, do come. We'd be happy to, you, to admit you. Her take, the name Patsy could have been male in the Irish community of Chicago and her admittance was based on gender confusion, not discrimination. She graduated in 1951, one of two women in the class. She was the first Asian American woman and woman of color to serve in the United States Congress, continuing to battle gender discrimination and racism. Today, recent research tells us that up to 40% of the long-term overall rise in employment among women in the age group of 25 to 34 is attributable to Title IX. There are 12 women being honored here today, Monmouth women. They were nominated by their coaches for their athletics, academics, but today's honorees are also recognized for their work in the community and for social justice. These young women are the real stars of our 12 varsity programs. One of the 12 goes on to represent Monmouth at the statewide Title IX celebration. Their bios are in your virtual program. We will now meet our honorees. I have asked our student athletes to speak just for a moment about the highlight of their years at Monmouth. What would you pass onto your freshman teammate, teammates as their golden memory? Then add what it is that your sport experience has readied you for your particular future. Leading the way, only a sophomore, yet an honoree this year for her tremendous work in the world of mentorship and community service with her fellow Hawks, lacrosse athlete, Casey James. Hi everyone, my name is Cassie James and I'm a sophomore on the Mammoth Women's Lacrosse team. Um, and first off, I wanna thank everyone who took the time to put this event together. Um, this is such a breath of fresh air to finally be able to see so many smiling faces during this COVID havoc. Um, we endured so much this year and I'm hopeful to say that the best is yet to come. Without further ado, I'm thrilled to start off our panel for our National Women's and Sports Day celebration. One of my many highlights as a student athlete here at Monmouth University is being able to immerse ourselves in activities that allow us to connect us to other athletes. Using our sports to become role models has far, been by far 
the greatest highlight beyond stepping on the field. Becoming the president of Flight Academy, a mentoring ship program for incoming freshmen, as well as being on the executive board for MSAC has been one of my greatest accomplishments thus far. Creating a welcoming, supportive, and inclusive environment is something I've been actively working towards and is something I take great pride in as a Monmouth University student athlete. A golden memory that I would like to share with my freshman teammates is the collective bond that we share and create during preseason. Working hard together to achieve a common goal was all worthwhile when you're standing next to someone who's pushing you to do your best. Specifically, one of the most prominent memories I've had during my time at Monmouth University is being our in-state re rival Rutgers 16-12 at our home turf of Kessler at the beginning of last season. The advice I would give to future college students in addition to my freshman teammates is just to be the person who cares the most, the person who tries the hardest and gives their best effort in everything you do. Be the leader that you once looked up to and be the person that everyone respects. We all dealt with the reality of our sport being taken away from us and this reality still lingers. When we have the ability to finally step on the field and work hard together from our common goal, we can't take it for granted. There are so many aspects of being a college student that has prepared me for my future as, as a speech language pathologist. College athletics have provided me with the solid foundation of hard work, skills, and disciplines that I believe that will lead to great accomplishments in the workforce as well as my personal life. I'm able to contribute in being a valuable member of the lacrosse team, as well as working towards a common goal. I've learned perseverance, resilience, and determination, as well as a lot of self-confidence along this journey. I've learned to get back up and shake off and move forward with my eye confidently focused on my goals. I learned from my mistakes and use those lessons to create successes for myself, as well as encourage those around me to be the best that they can be. I plan to work hard with children as well as adults to reach their full potential with their speech and language and encourage them to do anything as possible. Thank you so much for this nomination and I'm beyond excited to see what the future unfolds for my fellow female athletes. Good luck everyone. On behalf of Mama Swim Lacrosse, we will be rooting for each and every one of you during your upcoming athletic journey. Thank you. Cassie, fabulous job. Way to start it off in such a good fashion. We knew you could do that. Thank you. Here's a young lady who will most likely will follow in the, in the footsteps of the Patsy Minks of the world. A volunteer at Jersey Shore Medical Center and the Special Olympics, a contact tracer from track and field, Carrie Powers. Hi everyone, thank you for having us here today for this event. So I think that having the privilege to live the life of a college athlete throughout my past four years here at Monmouth has been the main highlight in itself. Throughout the sport of track, I was able to meet my teammates who quickly became my second family. Being able to share countless of memories with all my teammates and travel to places I've never been before while gaining a great educational experience are all equally worthy to me. Outside of track, being able to volunteer at Jersey Shore Medical this past year has been life-changing, especially through the COVID ruckus. Um, a golden memory that I would say is winning conference pre-COVID. So who knows when things are gonna go back to normal, but one of the best things was when we won indoor conferences in New York City, we would take both the buses right to Times Square and we'd get to take pictures on the, on like the red steps that are set up and stuff. So. Who knows when anyone's going to be able to do that again, but I think that I would tell incoming freshmen and people looking here that that was one of the golden memories and being able to celebrate with your team in a way where you didn't have to worry about masks and stuff like that. And then going into an accelerated nursing program is going to be a handful, but I think that being a student athlete for this long will ready me for anything that's going to come my way. Throughout this experience, I've gained a lot of time management skills that are going to be very worthwhile when going into one of these programs. Also, track is very individualized as a sport, so it takes a lot of confidence in yourself to go out there and race to your full potential. And I think that this is something that took me a while to really get the hang of, but it's surely gonna be needed for when I become a nurse to be confident in myself. Um, thank you all for a nomination for this award and good luck to everyone during their seasons that are upcoming. Carrie, thank you. And I know you're a, a champion uh, track and field per performer, but you'll, you will be a champion nurse. So thank you so much. One of the myths of Title IX that is girls sports increased, boys sports decreased. 
Although boys are 57% of the participants today, they were 93% in 1972. There are still almost 1 million more boys participating today. We still have our work to do to bring girls' participation forward. Interesting fact, there are now 9,000 girls who participate in flag football and almost 2,500 are now playing 11 man tackle football. We will now hear from bowler, Amanda Sabacosta. She is so sorry she cannot be with us as she is returning from her conference bowling competition in Greensboro, North Carolina. I would say like all of the opportunities I've been given here. So I was a walk on for the bowling team. So the opportunity by my coach to try out for the team, um, all the opportunities provided to me by my professors, such as my independent study research, and all of the opportunities to meet new people here at Monmouth. Um, so probably one of the golden moments I would pass on to new teammates would be um, how lucky we were this semester to be participating in our sport and being able to compete, even in COVID, um, the COVID atmosphere and just the honor of being able to pull from Monmouth. Um, so I plan on being a pediatric surgeon. So um, it's a very high pressure job. And um, the pressure of competing, the pressure of um, being in that competition setting, I think has really prepared me for the high pressure job that I plan to do in my future. Thanks. So today we are very fortunate to feature three of our female athlete alums. They each have a message for you. Our first is Alexis Knowles, swimmer extraordinaire, and now a mother of a beautiful daughter. Hi everyone, thank you for having me, Marilyn, and congrats to all of the women nominees. Um, I'll start off by saying how um, my experience in swimming has prepared me for um, work, um, my, my experience in work. Um, being a swimmer, um, there is an element of competition and just like in any other sport, there is an element of competition against your own teammates. And that is the biggest thing I think I've taken away that you're still competing um, when you get to the workplace. When you apply to any job, um, you're competing against other applicants. And once you're on your team, it's um, competition against your own teammates, but um, you get better by learning from those who are better than you. Just like when I was a swimmer, I would learn and shadow and ask for help from more advanced swimmers, ask for feedback from my coaches. And sport has helped prepared me for that um, competition within my own team. And then um, even against others um, outside of the company. And it helps to make me a better employee for the company and just um, for me to meet my personal goals. Uh, in my current role right now, I work for JLL as a project manager. Um, in compliance, and I help to I help about 15 project managers decommission some projects for a client. Um, very high stress, uh, very detail oriented, high volume work, and um, sport has also helped me with that. Learning how to manage my time, being calm under pressure, and the last piece I'll give is um, one of the biggest challenges I've faced. Just like um, most people, 2020 was a hard year, and for me as well. I experienced um, personal loss. Um, my husband passed away, and then I had our um, my our daughter, our first daughter, and I was a full time working mom. And I didn't want to be perceived as a woman who um, was going to be too emotional or um, one who couldn't um, be resilient. I think sometimes as women or as girls, we are um, subconscious about how we're perceived. So. I faced that challenge head on and just um, made my performance and my results talk for me. Um, I think if you perform well and if your results can speak for you, then any perceptions, whether correct or not, that people have will go away because they'll realize that you are resilient, that you can push through, you can separate any personal struggles you have and you can still be successful. So um, that's my tip of advice. And again, congratulations to all you female athletes and on your journeys, athletics and future workplace. Alexa, it's, you were so impressive as a student athlete when you were here and that hasn't gone away. Congratulations to you and thanks so much for being here. Okay. Another myth about Title IX is that girls just aren't interested in sport. 
No better example of if you build it, they will come. Title IX passed in 1972, ensured that educational programming opportunities would be equal for both genders. No more math for boys or the math for girls. Home ec for girls and shop for boys. Today, the medical field has 51% women as compared to 9% in 1972. The law profession is the same. A member of the ethics campaign of the America East Conference and the Athlete Ally, representative for our athletes. She is also a mentor and advocate for our LBGT community. Future field hockey coach, Ali Tarantino. Hi everyone. Um, I just first want to say thank you uh, for my nomination. Being able to represent the field hockey team today is super, uh, super um, important to me. Uh, to start off, I don't think there is one singular moment to pick that highlights my time here at Monmouth, but just in general, all the relationships in the family environment of the field hockey team is something that I wouldn't trade anything for. If I had to do something now, uh, nothing could beat that feeling of coming in freshman year and winning the conference championship and then being able to move on into the American East. Being a part of mom field hockey is pretty special. I would tell any freshman coming in that it will be super hard, but it'll also be super worth it and that you're here for a reason. You just gotta embrace that and keep a growth mindset. After I graduate, I plan on either becoming a field hockey coach or a physical education teacher. The growth mindset that I had here will carry over into my career so I can always keep bettering myself. The knowledge of the game and also the support that uh, the coaches give me will be something I carry on when I become a coach. Our coaches, Carly, Alyssa, and David are awesome role models and show me what great coaches look and also act like. Someday I hope to have that same impact that they have on me um, to my athletes and my students one day and carry over what Mama Field Hockey has impacted me. Thank you. Ali, I am so proud that you were considering coaching. We need women so badly. So please, uh, if there's anything I can do to help you make that dream come true, I, I'll be by your side. Thank you, Ali. We bring you words from runner Keelan Cummings, a pre-med student, contact tracer, and Special Olympics volunteer. Um, I think one of my favorite memories about being here at Monmouth is just being a part of the team and all the people and stuff that I've gotten to meet here, both academically and athletically. Um, the team is one of my favorite things about going to school here. So. <laughs> um, so some advice that I have is enjoy every moment that you have here. It's gone by so fast. I feel like it's crazy. I'm already a junior, and I appreciate the time that I've had here. Um, just enjoy the time with your teammates, whether that be working out on the track, or going to meets, long bus rides, um, stretching after practice, just anything you can do to really take it all in. <laughs> so being a part of the track team has taught me a lot, um, especially this past year. It's taught me a lot about resilience, and I think ambition is very important in life, and track has certainly um, helps me with that. I'm a health studies major, so I want to go to PA school. So after this, I plan on applying to PA school and hopefully getting in. Um, but I think track has definitely helped me um, through a lot of different things. Um, running hasn't always been the easiest with injuries and stuff for me, but you know the resilience aspect of it, um, my coaches, my teammates, they've all been very supportive and it's definitely been a lot. Um, learning about how to work in a team environment and build each other up and just be positive all the time. So our men's and women's uh, cross country teams uh, actually competed yesterday. And so this was very exciting. I know for them, they just wanted to be out there and our women finished second in their meet and our men finished first. So congratu congratulations to them. The problem in athletics programs today is we cannot quite figure out how to treat football. The football athletes like everyone else. In the early arguments against Title IX, every attempt was to try to keep football out of the equation as if there were three genders, men, women, and football. But every time that that was tried by our senators, it was defeated. There are only two genders and athletics departments must figure out how to share the pie more equally. In your homes today, your brothers do not get a bigger, bigger place or seat at the table. We all get fed and this is what we need to do in athletics. This next athlete, a pre-law major who will divide that pie equally for sure 
and a co-founder of our Black Student Athletes Huddle, discus thrower Alexis Yuzuru. Hi guys, I'm Alexis. Um, I want to start off by saying it's really a pleasure to be here today. Um, it's always amazing to be in a room full of strong and powerful women like yourselves. So thank you for having me and um, I'm really excited about this. Um, so I'll start with my highlight. I think my highlight at Monmouth is probably also the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me. Um, freshman year, um, I'm, I was just learning the weight. I came in as a shot put discus recruit. Um, so I'm just figuring out the weight and my teammates are hollering for me. It was our season opener. They're really shouting for me and I trip over my feet. I fall, the weight goes one way, I'm going in a different direction and I have never been so embarrassed. I was like, this is the end. I never wanna throw weight again, but they were screaming for me. Like I had just thrown my PR that I threw last year. Um, and I think that was a highlight for me because I knew that I had just stepped on a team that no matter what is going on in my personal life, uh, through struggles, through anything, they're gonna be hollering for me and ready to pick me up. Uh, even when I fall, quite literally. Um, so I think that was the highlight of my time at Monmouth because that was truly a moment when I knew that these girls and the men's team as well, because we work very closely with the men's track and field team. Um, they've really got my back and they're really going to be true friends that I'll have uh, forever. So I think that's the highlight of my time, even though I probably want to forget that moment. Um, and then to piggyback off of that, I think my golden memory is kind of quite the opposite. Sophomore year swings around and after a long summer of battling the weight, so heavy, I said, I'm determined to figure out this event. Um, I get invited to the Milrose Games my sophomore year, um, which was a great accomplishment. I think the standard was like a 15 meter throw and I didn't even, I couldn't have even dreamt of throwing a number like that. And then to be invited and meet some Olympic athletes that um, I look at, I'm looking at film, trying to like perfect my craft in the way that they have. Um, I think that was a golden memory because it speaks volumes to, you could be the smallest girl on the team, you can be a walk on, but as you put your mind to it, you can accomplish things that you quite literally dream of doing. So I think that that is a great piece of advice that I think everyone should know is whatever you put into something is exactly what you're going to get out, which I think is the biggest thing with track because track is very unique. It's an individual sport. Um, so there's no blaming anyone else. Um, when I'm in that circle alone, it's all of the times that I've done reps in practice and looked at film and asked questions. Um, I get to put it on display in that circle by myself. Um, which also nicely flows into my future plans. I am taking my first LSAT in April. April 13th is the date. I'm so nervous, but I've been studying hard. I've been putting a lot of effort into it. And it's almost the same with track. Everything that I put into all of the reps, all the practice tests, I think I'm really prepared for this one. And I think that's what track has really taught me as a whole is you've got to be accountable because when your teammates are looking for you to looking at you to score points at our MAC championship, you've got to be ready for it. And sometimes we're down and we're going in day two, like, oh no, but we always pull through as a track team because we hold each other accountable. We hold ourselves accountable and there's great discipline when it comes to the sport of track and field, which is why I think I love it. Even though sometimes at practice, I'm like, oh, is this really for me? But yeah, so thank you guys again for having me. It's been a pleasure and I'm excited to hear what everyone else has to say tonight. Alexis, thank you very much. And what a great message. And uh, good luck on the 13th. We'll be, we'll be rooting for you, but I know you'll be prepared. And now a moment with our soccer alum, the super fast Ileana Blackshear. Hi everyone, it's been great to hear everyone speak. I've actually changed what I was gonna say a few times after hearing these stories. I want to start with how athletics has helped me in my personal life and my business life. And I would not be where I am today if it was not for athletics. I wanna start with saying clear communication is very important. 
when I was a student at Monmouth, I spoke to Christy Turner, my soccer coach, and I told her that I wanted to intern one summer. And she heard what I said. And she's like, oh, I also want you to sit down here and practice. So she spoke to the administration and was able to have an internship created for me that summer. So I stayed on campus and I also interned there. And what I learned in the work environment is that people don't know what's going on in your head. So their position came open and I heard my boss at the time talking about it. And he goes, oh, we're just gonna, why don't we call that person that you interviewed for another, another job? And I went into his office and I said, Mike, I really, after hearing about this job, I want the role. What do I need to do to get this role? And he was very shocked and he goes, you want the role? I said, yes, I want the role. So clear communication is extremely important. I ended up, did get the role, but I had to be aggressive. I had to clearly communicate what I wanted. Another aspect for the business world is teamwork. And we all play different sports and we all have different strengths and weaknesses. So when I was on the soccer field, I played offense and I, our defense was in charge of protecting the goal and not letting any of the balls go into the net. And now in the business world, in my department, I, there is some different responsibilities I don't want to do because I don't like them and it's not my strength. So we have other people in the department that can help make those different initiatives come to life. And then additionally, work-life balance, because as an athlete, you have to worry about practice. You have to worry about school, your grades. You have to worry about having a social life. And when you start working, it's the same exact thing. You want to have fun with your friends and family. You want to do well in your corporate field. You want to also work out and maintain a healthy lifestyle. And then additionally, I would have to say the nervousness. So I, when I would run track and I would before a track, the 400, I would be on the line and I'd be warming up and doing my striders and I'm panicking. I can't breathe and I get so nervous. And now when I'm going to work and I have these business meetings with C-level people and board members, I, I don't have the same nervousness. I'm still nervous, but it's nothing like the nervousness that I had coming from soccer and coming from track as well. What I do now in my, for my, my job is I am the director of event hospitality for the Brooklyn Nets. So I'm the head of hospitality. So that means I'm in charge of all of the ownership hospitality for our team and arena owners. And then additionally, any of our celebrities, any of our VIPs that are coming. So if we have a suite holder that is, like for example, we have a game on the 23rd. So I've been coordinating with all of our guests on when they're going to come. And we have to do all this COVID testing because as you know, it's COVID. So we have all these tests that we need to administer. So my job is to make sure that any of the VIPs that are coming, that they're happy and that they're excited. And I also oversee our corporate events. And additionally, I also am now playing on a semi-professional flag football team. So I'm excited about that. And I would say the biggest challenge has just been being patient because when I first started working, you are applying for jobs and it might not be the role that you want, but you have to understand that it's not gonna be your last role. And you need to get your foot in the door. I started off as an executive assistant with the Brooklyn Nets. I've been there for 10 years. And that was the last thing I wanted to do. I didn't want to be answering phone calls. I wanted somebody answering my phone. So I still took the job and now I'm a director. So just be patient and you will definitely achieve what you want to do. Thank you. Ileana, thank you. You were always fast and it looks like you're fast in the corporate world as well. Congratulations about your success and thanks for being here. Here are some fun softball quips, batting and running while still looking stunning. I make this helmet look good. I'm not sure how I got this bruise, but I know it was worth it. What's a diamond without a little dirt on it? Here's our softball honoree, Lindsay Barron. Hi everybody. First star, I'd like to say thank you. Uh, to everyone that made this happen and possible, and I'm honored by this nomination. Um, the highlight of my time at Monmouth is by far when I was able to celebrate winning the MAC championship with my team. I was so proud to be a part of the program, and it was just so amazing to see that our hard work had finally paid off, especially going and being able to show off, you know, Mammoth in regionals uh, was such an amazing experience and just made my bond and relationship with my teammates so much stronger. Um, I would tell to any young college athlete to just cherish every moment and embrace your team because four years is such a short amount of time and the years go by so fast. So you just make relationships and memories that last a, a lifetime. Um, 
I would also say that it's such a fast paced life. So you want to take the time to just cherish and be grateful for what you've been given. And don't take any moment for granted because you never know when the last time will be that you put that uniform on. Um, being a part of this team has prepared me for many aspects of my life post college, but most importantly, it set me up to be successful in my career. I am an aspiring to become a physician's assistant and it requires a tremendous amount of teamwork and collaboration. Being a part of Mammoth Softball has taught me leadership, perseverance, and most importantly, how to be a team player, uh, all of which are essential for success in the medical field. Um, I also want to mentor and coach young softball players because um, by sharing my knowledge and skills, I feel that I'm giving back to a community that has given me so much over the years. Lindsay, thank you and good luck with that mentorship. Thank you for doing that. Uh, one of my special memories is watching you guys play in ten at Tennessee. That was pretty special. Thank you. Did you know that women own over 35, 39% of all US businesses? And they are the fastest growing segment of the US economy. They generate more new jobs than male-owned companies and they have a startup rate at one and a half times the average rate in the US. Our last video comes from our, from our athlete who is competing as we host this celebration. Women's basketball is playing Fairfield University right now. Meet molecular biology major and Black Lives Matter event speaker, Alexa Wallace. Um, the highlight of my time on Monmouth would probably be my freshman year when we got um, fourth place um, for the MAC tournament. The golden memory of my time here that I would like to pass on to the freshmen would be our international trip to um, the Dominican Republic. We played two games in the capital and then got to have some really great times in Punta Cana after and just chill and team bond with the players, the coaches. So it was a lot of fun. Um, so I want to go to med school and to become a doctor, hopefully a neurologist or pediatric surgeon, you know, don't know yet, but um, I think that working with all kinds of different people on a team has uh, prepared me well for the next half of my life. Um, being able to figure out how to be disciplined, um, you know, balancing school and basketball has been really tough, but it'll probably be worth a while when I go to medical school and I have to balance that and a ton of other things. So. Really looking forward to those opportunities, and I'm very grateful for all the things that I have learned um, while playing this sport, especially at Monmouth. Great. All of you here today are role models, the high school athletes to your schoolmates and your middle school followers, the fans, a supporter of mom, women's athletics, the business, business women who hire and support women. And as the deputy mayor of New York said, the people we celebrate in our public realm can either inspire young girls to dream big or it can perpetuate the message that women have not contributed to society. Of the 150 statues of historical figures in New York City, five are of women. Shirley Chisholm is the sixth, 50 years after she became the black first the first black woman to serve in Congress and the first woman to seat the Democratic nomination for president. Now, meet the co-captain and director of our student athlete social media, tennis athlete, Sydney DiNardo. Hi everyone, my name is Sydney and I am a senior on the women's tennis team. First, I wanna say thank you to my coach Patrice Murray for nominating me for this amazing opportunity and everyone who put this event together. I am very honored to be one of the women here today and congratulations to all the honorees. I remember my captain from last year being nominated for this opportunity and I remember thinking, I hope to follow in her footsteps and be an honoree my senior year. Coach Murray called me this year and told me she nominated me and I felt extremely honored and I'm very grateful to be here today. Monmouth has given me so many opportunities that I'm very grateful for. The highlight of my time at Monmouth would be becoming great friends with my teammates and making very fun memories over the years. Thanks to Mama Tennis, I have a team and friends that I know I'll always be able to come to even if we're not close by. A golden memory I would pass on to my fresh teammates is the mo moment I was told by Coach Murray that I was going to be captain with my teammate Sophia. 
it was in the beginning of the pandemic. So we were all quarantined at home. And after a team Zoom meeting, Coach Murray called me and told me I was going to be captain my senior year. It was a very rewarding feeling and one of my goals I had over the years that I was so happy to accomplish. I also always love being here to support and encourage my teammates and hope to be a good role model for them. My parents have always been my biggest role models and still in me the drive and dedication to help and guide others. This position allowed me to become a leader and hopefully someone to look up to as I look up to them. I hope to have a positive influence on my teammates and I hope they'll be great and know they'll be great captains in the future too. A message I would pass on to my freshman teammates would be do not give up, stay motivated and have so much fun on this incredible journey. I know times are hard right now, but stick together and make the most of it. I think being a captain has also readied, readied me for my future because it has taught me many leadership skills and how to be responsible for myself and others. My future plan as of now is to come back next year to study for my MBA in the fifth year program and help my team out more than more when they need me. Thank you again to all, to my coaches, teammates, and parents for your endless support and encouragement and guidance. And it has led me to where I am today. I am very grateful to be part of this amazing women's leadership celebration. Good luck to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sydney. And uh, women's tennis competed yesterday too. So we were very excited to see that. They were up at West Point and congratulations and getting a match in. Thank you, yes. Now we'll meet our basketball alum, Brianne Edwards. Uh, thank you for having me and um, it's good to see uh, a bunch of strong women out here. Um, so I'm Brianne Edwards. I graduated in 2009. I played for the women's basketball team from 2004 to 2008. Um, so just a little bit about how athletics has helped me in the business world. Uh, so I was a captain my last two years at Monmouth. Um, that definitely taught me leadership skills. Um, I've been, uh, I'm sure Dr. McNeil will probably see, and I've, I'm pretty shy, like off the court, but on the court, you know, I was, I was very focused and uh, diligent and trying to, you know, lead, lead the team. So leadership skills is something that I definitely, um, uh, appreciated and, and gathered from, from my experience. Uh, also time management. I was a biology major at MU and it was very difficult balancing um, athletics and, and schoolwork. So um, uh, bringing that over into like my professional career, you know, it's, I've, I've definitely gotten more organized in, in my time and, and making sure that, you know, I'm doing the work that, that, I, that needs to be done for my unit in a timely, manage, uh, in a timely manner. And also staying calm under pressure. I would, I would say, um, you know, you're going to face many uh, trials and tribulations. So, um, you know, you just got to persevere and, and continue on through. So a little bit about me. I, once I graduated MU, I uh, enrolled in a chiropractic program. So I'm a doctor of chiropractic. I don't practice consistently right now because uh, shortly after graduating chiropractic school, I actually enlisted into the Air Force. So I was recently promoted in December to staff sergeant uh, to more of a leadership and supervisory um, position. So I am an aviation resource manager. I basically make sure that the pilots are good to go before they step on a flight line, whether it's for their uh, like medical issues or, or any of their training. Uh, that's what I handle. Um, I also did a little bit of air traffic control once I enlisted, um, but I ended up retraining into aviation resource management. So I would say one of the biggest uh, challenges that I've faced, um, I was, as I was um, going through, you know, I realized that I wanted to commission. Um, it's been a really tough road for me trying to cross over, especially because I have my degrees. Um, but, um, you know, I'm still continuing uh, with last year in COVID, I wasn't able to kind of submit an application, but, you know, I'm still, um, I'm still going to truck on and still try to, to commission possibly into a pilot position. Um, so who knows, you might see me <laughs> in the air at some point, but um, for any of you, you know, whether for your um, personal or professional goals, you know, keep striving for greatness and uh, don't give up. You know, you'll, you'll get to where you want to be one day. Wow. 
Brianne, thank you for your service. And yes, I can't wait to see you in the air, but shy Brianne, wow, you have accomplished a great deal. Congratulations. Did you watch the Super Bowl? Did you see the first NFL female ref, Sarah Thomas, married, mother of three, college grad? Wow. And how about this young lady who donates her time to local junior golf teams and is breaking barriers for women's golf by serving as a caddy at many of our private New Jersey clubs? Golfer, Amanda Hart. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Hart. I'm a junior on the women's golf team. First, I'd like to thank everyone for being here today and thank everyone who has made this event possible. So since I've been at Monmouth, I have formed lifelong friendships and memories that I will cherish for a lifetime. The highlight of my time here at Monmouth was when our team won in the fall of 2019 at the Wagner Invitational. We beat Bucknell, Wagner and other uh, competition in our conference. Coach has always told us that practicing in harsh weather conditions will be the difference between a team that wins and a team that loses. Uh, during our practice round at this event, it was pouring rain and freezing cold. We were the only team out there on the course for our practice round. Walking and analyzing the layout of each hole, um, this had ultimately paid off throughout the tournament. And as a team, we pulled it together and scored a low round of 331, which led us to a huge win. This is a memory that I will remember for a lifetime. Ever since I played my first event at Monmouth, my teammates and I write one word on our arms for them, to, for each of us to look at while we're playing. During a round of golf, things do not go as planned and we have to bring ourselves together because of the long hours we are out playing on the course. It gives us motivation and something to look back on to remind us that we are all in this together. Even though we're not playing as a group all at once, um, although golf is an individual sport, we collectively as a team put together our best performance, even even though we're not in the same group like other sports are. With the new freshmen coming in the fall, I would uh, make sure to continue this tradition. I'm excited for them to be part of something great. Coach encourages us each and every day to be better than yesterday. We're up every morning at 6 a.m. for practice or lift to build a better program and to create something special. In the near future, once I graduate, I plan on becoming a financial advisor in whichever company I have the opportunity to work for I feel that my experience in an individual or an independent sport like golf will help me because I'll be able to contribute my ideas and talents as we, or talents while also working together as a team. I'm excited to see what the future holds. Thank you. Amanda, thank you. And um, you're gonna get a lot more opportunity to practice in poor weather because <laughs> New Jersey can't get out of this snow soon enough. At age 11, 24% of girls participate in sport. Only four years later, it will be less than 16%. The dropout rate is staggering, particularly because if girls quit sport before age 11, there is only a 10% chance that they will have an active adult lifestyle after the age of 25. We have to keep them in sport. Meet our nursing student who responded during COVID to 100 first aid calls while working as a nursing assistant in a local emergency department. Swimmer, Laura Patterson. Hi everyone, my name is Laura and I'm a senior on the women's swim team. It's nearly impossible to pick a highlight from four amazing years as part of the swim team here at Monmouth. There's so many memories I can look back on and argue is my favorite um, moment from my time as a swimmer. Right now, the memories I'm holding on to are from last February at our 2020 MAC Championships. At the time, no one knew that this would be my last championship meet. No one could predict that our season this year would have gone the way that it has. But I would not change a single thing about the championship meet last year. It's bittersweet looking back at the memories we made, knowing I will, I will not be in Buffalo, New York competing this year again. If anything, my highlight from my time here at Monmouth is not a physical moment, but instead it would be learning a lesson to not take any opportunity you're given for granted. A golden memory from my time here is our annual training trips to Key Largo, Florida. It's here on these trips where you truly make your best friends. No one else other than your teammates would understand the training we're going through during our week away from school. 
The trip's a nice getaway from the snowy cold January weather we experience here in New Jersey, but hands down training trip is the hardest week of our swim season. It's during this time where you truly discover how mental, mentally and physically tough you are as an athlete. You build bonds with your teammates that will never break. While in the moment it's hard to look past the early morning, the sore muscles, the endless laps up and down the pool, the memories you'll share with your teammates during this training trip will last with you forever. Being a member of this swim team these last four years has prepared me for my future career. In a few short months, I'm going to graduate with a degree in nursing, and I'm hoping to work in either pediatric emergency medicine or with oncology patients. Nursing today is a daunting career to walk into amidst a global pandemic, but I'm so grateful to have learned many skills from my time here as an athlete that will ben benefit me as I begin my career. Swimming's taught me valuable lessons in leadership, mental toughness, teamwork, and so much more that will undoubtedly help me succeed in my next chapter of my life. So I just wanna say thank you so much for the nomination and thank you for everyone that made today possible. Laura, thank you. And thank you for your soon to be nursing service. We are entirely grateful to that profession and we will be to you. I'm sure you will be a champion nurse as well. Okay, and here is something else that didn't make sense. I repeat this story every year because I like it. It might be interesting to, to you to know that the 800 meters for women was first allowed in the 1928 Olympics. However, despite some exemplary results, many women had not prepared properly and fell in exhaustion throughout the race. People made conclusions that racing that far could damage women's health stating their uterus might fall out. Until 1960, no race over 200 meters was contested for women. The marathon came to the Olympics in 1984. We now have 43 chances for, we have now had 43 chances for women to run in the Boston Marathon. Our last honoree is the magnificent Leah Moore, who is our honoree for the statewide Title IX event. An, active, an activist in the Black Lives Matter movement. movement. Welcome, Aaliyah. Hi, everyone. Um, for starters, I just want to say congratulations and thank you to Dr. McNeil serving 28 years here at Monmouth University. Your leadership and selflessness is what I personally admire. And I want to thank you for advocating for student athletes such as myself and giving us the opportunity to compete at such a high level. For this award, it's a true blessing and honor to be selected as Woman of the Year nominee. I wanna thank my coaches and their love and support. I would also like to thank my teammates. Little do they know of how much they've helped me grow as a player, student, and individual. I admire each and every individual on my soccer team, the support and willingness to learn and grow with one another warms my heart and allows me to unleash my light and makes me wanna lead by example. Thank you, family, friends, Harmony Ministry, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, the NAACP Youth and College Division for supporting me today. I love you all. I've been saying this quote to myself that makes me work hard and humble myself. In the midst of adversity that I'm currently facing and dealing with, it's a quote that challenges me, that moves me and awakens something greater inside of me. And the quote is this, it's bigger than you. Words and actions are powerful. So everything that I say, everything that I do, all of my accomplishments, striving for excellence, it's not about me, nor is it about just in general. Like I know that by standing firm and challenging myself to be uncomfortable for the greater good, to seek peace and walk and live in love, to have faith and to see a change, I must do that so that others that may do the same. As a believer, I trust God and I strive to be in his image each and every day. As an activist, I do not seek division and I'm not afraid to take a stand for what is right and is for the greater good for all mankind. My main purpose in life is to spread love, equip people with tools to succeed, no matter what age I am, no matter what skin color I am and no matter the circumstances. My objective is for all people to unite as one. Athletically, winning is something that the Mammoth Women's Soccer Team does. By focusing on the things we can control, giving our absolute best, demanding more from ourselves, competing, 
remaining disciplined and sacrificing, we are fulfilled with much more. Monmouth University has given me the opportunity to get an excellent education, to play the sport that I love with driven, well-rounded young women and spectacular coaches, trainers, sports med professors, the list just goes on of the relationships and connections I've made here at Monmouth. I will continue to lead. I will continue to equip myself and grow, gaining wisdom and courage to make a difference here at Monmouth and in the world. So God bless everyone on this Zoom call and thank you very much. Aaliyah, fabulous. Uh, I am so glad we did record this. Uh, I think you've summed it up for all these great uh, women that have spoken to this crowd today. And I'm so appreciative of all of you. Um, and I'm so proud of all of you. So thank you. Thank you. And now I turn the program over to Chris Shaw. He's a Morgan Stanley person, but more important to us, a member of our athletics committee and the board of trustees a wonderful mentor and friend to all people and things athletic. Chris will introduce our fabulous panel and moderate the questions and answers. You won't want to miss this spectacular opportunity. And please go to the chat if you want, if you want to ask any questions. Over to you, Chris. Great, Marilyn, thank you. And um, I wanna thank Dr. McNeil and Monmouth University for giving us the opportunity to partner uh, on such an important uh, initiative, event, uh, cultural experience that, that we're, so, we're so excited to be part of this. So thank you for, for that opportunity. Um, on behalf of Morgan Stanley, congratulations to all of the high school and college um, athletes, leaders, strong women that, that just came before me. Um, so inspired to hear all of you. Um, I have four children, one daughter, she's in college. Uh, swimming uh, over on the West Coast, and um, I, I know she would be really, really proud that I would uh, be able to participate in something like this, but <clears throat> thank you and congratulations. Um, about myself, so I've been with Morgan Stanley 27 years. I was given the opportunity to become managing director about eight years ago, and one of the core values, we have five here at Morgan Stanley, but one of the more uh, important core values of our firm is to commit to diversity and inclusion. Uh, and, and most importantly, value the individual and cultural differences as a defining strength. And as you've seen with the athletes before me, and you'll see with the panelists now after me, the strength and, and, and the wisdom and the, the hard work and the effort uh, continues to resonate throughout this entire event. Uh, and like I said, the four panelists um, are, are no different. So what I wanna do is uh, introduce each one of them I'll tell you a little bit, there's so much to tell uh, as it relates to their bios and their backgrounds. I'm just gonna give you a little flavor uh, for each of them. And then I'm gonna ask each of them uh, individually to introduce themselves a little more a little more broadly so you can fully understand and appreciate uh, who we have the opportunity to hearing from today. So we're gonna start with Talitha uh, Vickers. So she was a Mammoth track, uh, uh, track and Field member. She's a news anchor for NBC affiliate TV 12 in North Carolina. While at Monmouth, Talitha served as a captain of the women's track and field team and was a student body president of the university's Division I Athletic Association. She also earned the Bill Boylan Award, the highest award given to the student athlete who consistently demonstrates leadership, sportsmanship, scholarship, and athletic ability. So Talitha, there's so much more to talk uh, about you. So can you Introduce yourself to the group as well, please. Sure, can you hear me, Chris? Yes, I can. So make sure, okay, great. Thank you so much for that great introduction, Chris. And I, on um, behalf of my family who has just cannot say enough about Monmouth University, thank you so much for this opportunity because as a, an alum um, and a former student athlete, Mammoth has literally changed my whole world, opened up so many doors through with Dr. Um, Marilyn McNeil, as well as Coach Joe Compagni. And those doors include, as you mentioned, not only being on television, but being able to tell other people's stories. I'm also a, a recent author of, of a children's book, Why My Hero Had to Go. I've um, had the opportunity to create a fund in the middle of a pandemic to help small businesses. It's called Restart Winston-Salem. Um, 
And that really helped to stretch the arms and help other people. And I'm proud to say that it was run by three minority women raising over $20,000 to help other people in, in need. And that really started at Monmouth University where I built such a strong core foundation and was able to also meet some of my best friends. And um, that also led to the opportunity to create a scholarship for my former teammate who passed away. Um, and a scholarship to continue her legacy and having a strong foundation of women around me to, you know, even in those quiet moments to help me um, as a professor and as a journalist and as a writer and as a teacher has really catapulted me. So I can go on and on and on about mom university. I don't want to take up too much time, but if it were not for being an athlete, I can guarantee you, I would, maybe I would have been where I am today, but it would not have been um, as sweet as it has been because uh, I have learned so, so, so much. Terrific comments. Thanks for kicking it off. All right, over to Tasha Youngblood Brown. So a little bit about her. Uh, professional experience currently works at Ernst & Young, managing director in the government and public sector. Her resume also includes working at Princeton University, Brookdale Community College, and then Ernst Young before that. Some of the um, <clears throat> licenses that uh, Tasha holds, she holds a license in real estate. She's a certified life coach. She uh, received her MBA from Monmouth University uh, and also her BA in political science from Monmouth University. So Tasha, I'm gonna turn it over to you to further introduce yourself. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, it might be a little echo there. I'm so excited to be with you today. So excited to hear about all the amazing women um, before me. I'm going to give you a little shocker. I'm not a mammoth athlete. I am an alum, however. Um, but one of the reasons that I'm so excited to be here is that um, regardless, I understand what competition looks like. And I understand what leadership and all of that looks like. Um, so as we get into the panel a little later, um, I'm so excited to talk to each of you about that. Um, in addition, just as a little bit of an introduction, um, I'm born and raised in Long Branch, not too far from Monmouth University. I actually live right up the street. Come on over, everybody. Just kidding. Um, but more importantly, I love Monmouth. Um, I've committed my career, my time to Monmouth, um, and really just looking forward to talking to all of you and honored to be on this panel with everyone today. Terrific, thank you. All right, going to Kara Kelly. So Kara, um, for 25 years, has been solving problems related to disruption. She's worked with companies like Nike, Sephora, Gap, Mattel, and Best Buy. In 2020, yep, this past year, believe it or not, Kara co-founded a company called Lore and founded KGK Capital Advisors, which I'm, I, I'd love for, to hear more about. Lure is a majority Black-owned, female-led CBD wellness brand that sells directly to the consumer. KGK Capital Advisors provides guidance for those who want to be more financially savvy, but just don't know where to start. Kara earned her MBA from Darden Graduate School of Business Administration uh, from the University of Virginia and a BA in Economic and International Relation Relations from Brown University. So without further ado, Kara, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Hi, thanks, Chris. Um, is there an echo? Okay, um, thank you. So uh, Kara Kelly, I, um, as Chris said, I did 20 years in consulting, uh, working for some marquee brands, and I also led a global products business uh, that took me to Asia, Europe, and um, my office at that point was in Chicago. Um, and so I uh, am just, I've been so happy to hear these stories today of all these women athletes who have done amazing job. I um, was an athlete as well. I was a track and field athlete. Um, so shout out to all the track and field athletes I heard today. And I also was on the men's wrestling team, um, mostly because I was told that I couldn't be on it. So I had a choice between football and wrestling if I wanted to stay in six period gym. And I chose wrestling and followed through with that and won several of my matches. Um, 
So um, I'm just inspired by the talent I've heard here today, and I'm looking forward to talking with all of you. It makes me realize, though, that I was uh, I did graduate from college in the late 1900s and everyone else starting with the 2000s here. So um, I'm just happy to chat with all of you. Cara, thank you. Uh, somehow, some way, we're going to work in that men's wrestling story uh, throughout the next uh, 30 minutes or so. <clears throat> but thank you. Great comments. All right. Last but definitely not least, Monica Reese. She's a designer and entrepreneur based in Normal, Illinois. Uh, she's been in that industry for about 20 years. After graduating UNC Chapel Hill and working in corporate America, Monica's desire to pursue her passion of design um, brought her to the Pratt Institute in New York City. Monica also operated her own design firm, uh, taught design at the Art Institute of Charlotte, and oh, by the way, she was on HGTV's uh, hit show, uh, Property Brothers, uh, with, with the two twins that, that you may have seen, I'm sure. Um, but the list goes on and on. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Monica to further introduce herself. Monica, are you, are you on mute? Yeah, I got a signal for that. Thanks. <laughs> Hi there. So happy to see you guys on Zoom. Uh, you nominees are so impressive. I was listening like, oh my gosh. Um, and part of the reason I'm so impressed is because I was not a student athlete either. You guys have such an edge, uh, whether you're a nominee or you're already working, you're bringing such an edge to the industry. So kudos to you. Um, I'm Monica and I am affiliated with Sports by Association. I guess my husband is a uh, basketball coach and he actually coached at Monmouth with King Rice from 2011 to 2015. So that is my association with sports. And I got to know Dr. McNeil and all of the staff there at that time. And I'm just like, I was so blown away by the, the, the feeling that the family feeling and support structure that they have there at Monmouth. So I'm so excited and thank you for letting me be a part of, a part of today. Terrific. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna ask one question, we're gonna go through the panel, and then we're gonna ask another question and go reverse in the panel. And then I have specific questions for each individual on the panel. And then at the very end, uh, we're gonna take questions. If you have any questions during um, the, the discussion and want to be asked at the end, all you have to do is go into the chat room uh, and, and uh, Jessica Cavanaugh, um, we'll, we'll queue those up and then we'll, we'll ask some questions at the end. All right, all right, so let's jump right in. All right, we're going to start with uh, Talitha. We'll, we'll go in the order in which I introduced everyone. So the first question, in a boardroom, women are often the lone representative of women with a seat at the table, and their voice is sometimes invincible. Black women have a double inv invisibility. How have you navigated that circumstance? What has worked and what has not worked? Thank you, Chase. That's a great question. And I feel like just jumping right in preparation is key. Knowing your audience and knowing what you bring to the table and standing firm in that because you're right far too often, you know, there'll be a group of men and there'll be a group of white men and you know, you're the only minority in the room, whether that's a female or they're a black female, a woman of color, and, you know, never make yourself smaller. Um, when you know what you know, what you know, bring it to the table. Um, far too often, I have witnessed other women cower to or make themselves smaller. And you and I both know, like, at the end of the day, even in ath ath athletics, as an athlete, you can't be, you know, the fourth leg on that relay and just be small. You've got to come through. You've got to be prepared. You've got to have your training. You've got to stretch and make sure that you're warmed up and that you're ready. So I say bring that same mentality to the table and know the audience that you're bringing. Also, find other advocates within the room. There might not be any, but there might be someone in that boardroom that will um, also be able to speak 
up on your behalf, but don't rely on that because you're strong enough to hold your own. You don't need necessarily, in my opinion, someone to co-sign your brilliant idea. You are brilliant all together on your own and bring that to the table, but also make sure that you are prepared. My family always instilled in me, private practice determines public performance. So um, on those occasions, whether it's in the boardroom or outside of the boardroom, make sure that you are well and beyond prepared. Well, great answer. Way to start it off. Um, let me go over to Tasha. Let me throw that same question to you, please. Sure, I, I can build on um, Talitha's point and, and really just add on to it in that um, if I think about my 25 year career, there certainly have been moments where I had to be more and I had to do more and I had to show up to Talitha's point bigger than I may have expected, right? Um, early on in my career, um, and even now, uh, being the only one in the room is not uh, an uncommon thing. I'm sure some of you have felt it, not only on Mama's campus, but probably in life and in spaces. That doesn't change, right? That will continue. That, that is what life looks like. So either you take advantage of that opportunity or you shrink into that small space until things change. Guess what? It won't change. So I'm going to always say, see that opportunity. Have you ever been the one, if you have ever been the one in a conversation or in the room and you're thinking the thought and somebody else says it before you, learn from that. That, that used to happen to me a lot, right? I would think the thing that I wanted to put out and being too intimidated, too uncomfortable with the spaces that I'm in, I wouldn't speak it, right? I learned to not do that, right? To put my best self forward at all times. And I would encourage each of you to do the same and not and to not be afraid to have the wrong answer because it's not always about the answer, right? But is it about, it is about the experience that you're gonna have along the way. So just to build on what Talitha says, I think playing big and always showing up as your best self will be your greatest asset now versus, and as well as later. Terrific. Cara, is there an experience that you would love to share with this group that uh, they can learn from? Sure. I mean, I, of course, building the, the, the words of advice already shared were exactly on point with my thoughts. I have some tactical recommendations and some um, other recommendations, like strategic recommendations. Tactically, just be sure to show up in the room a bit early so that you literally have a seat at the table. There are sometimes meetings where there's the table and then there's uh, external seating. So show up a little bit early. And that also gives you a chance to sometimes talk to other people and get allies to align with before you go into a meeting, particularly if you're gonna talk about a tough subject where you need some support when you mention your comments, a little pre-meeting never hurts. Um, to get some alliances with people. So just be at the table, put your computer there, put your notebook there, grab your cup of coffee and have your little pre-meeting and also um, have that connection. The other is um, just knowing that you're never alone. I always carry with me Maya Angelou's words. I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. And that is the idea that your ancestors have paved the way for you to be in that room, at that table, in that position. And so I call on my ancestors when I need a little bit more strength because I'm feeling intimidated or unable to, to say my point of view. And then that helps me speak up. So um, just have that confidence in the moment. And even if you feel like that last meeting didn't go so well, just come back and you're all athletes you'll do that. You've had to deal with disappointment, but always just come back and come back just as strong with the points that you need to make. I love the reference to Maya, Maya Angelou. Outstanding comments, Cara. Thank you. And uh, Monica, uh, what would you like to add to this? Um, I think the ladies, have, the ladies have covered it, but um, I guess the last thing I would add is, uh, you know, I'm a little older than most of the folks here too, you know, I'm with you, Cara, but uh, I was raised and I don't know if there's if we're still teaching our kids this, but it's not enough to be better or to be equal. You've got to be better. I see some head nods, Tasha. Uh, and really, I think I've carried that around with me for years. And at this age, there's a lot of confidence in being the person in the room that 
does have more experience, does have more education. Um, so I think even as young as you ladies are, you can go ahead and start. So if there's a subject that you don't know about, uh, Cara is my business partner. She's um, so savvy in finance. I am not. I'm super savvy in a lot of things, but not in finance. So she told me about a book and I read it the next day. So I think that we have to just be very open-minded to opportunities to learn and grow so that we can be better. Because if you're a woman, and especially if you're a Black woman, you're going to need that just to be able to be in the room. Terrific. Thank you. All right, let's move on to another question. And we'll go in reverse order um, for, for this one. So typically, younger uh, adults, male, female, I'd say specifically female, um, undervalue the, the importance of having a sponsor, of having a mentor, uh, a fan, an advocate, you know, the, the, the boss relationship. Like walk us through your ideas, each one of you please, uh, about the importance of having a mentor, a sponsor, uh, a, you know, an advocate, uh, and maybe something specific that worked in your, in your line of work. So like I said, we'll go in reverse order. Monica, we'll start with you. Yeah, uh, having an advocate, um, it is so critical. Um, I do agree with Talithia. You don't have to have someone sign off on everything, but having that foundational support is so important. Uh, my first job out of college was with IBM, so a long way from design. But from that time on, I literally have had someone in my corner. At the time, it was a woman who'd been there for 10 years, and she saw something in me. But why did she see it? because I shared it. I shared with her the fact that I wanted to grow, that being in that entry level position wasn't enough, that I wanted to get an opportunity. So when the opportunities came, she put my name in the hat. So out of a couple of hundred people, I was one of eight that got the promotion. So I could go through this in every bit of every job, every career path that I've had. So yeah, it's critical to your success. And I think it really does start, getting advocates start with be, starts with being your own advocate. I've got to advocate for myself in order to get other people on board to advocate for me. Terrific. Cara, please. Yeah, I think that one thing is knowing what the different roles mean is, is a really important thing. Your sponsor might be someone that gets assigned by the company um, or your mentor might be someone assigned by the company to uh, guide you. Um, that's an assigned role. The, an advocate and a sponsor is really someone who gives up a piece of their equity, their personal equity of which they have a limited amount to speak up for you. And that speak up for you at the compensation table when they're making annual performance evaluations, to speak up for you when they're doing layoffs because they're going through hard times and to really kind of always, and when there are new roles available, we heard one of the athletes talk about, you know, stepping up to, or several talked about stepping up and asking for it. And, and that, that um, advocate is the person who will put a little bit of their credibility on the line for you. So know that you need people in all the different roles. You need your friends who can help you uh, be a lifeline. You need your, uh, your company assigned, um, you know, mentor as a person who will uh, help you guide and navigate the system, but then you need your advocate. And um, sometimes it's really important to get that advocate to be a genuine, you always need that person to be a genuine advocate of yours. Now, how do you get that? You show up at the events. And I know right now we're not doing social events necessarily, but we're doing them at a distance. I have found over my career that people feel differently about showing up to the events. Like, do I belong there? Do I really want to go drinking? I don't really drink. Show up, get your mocktail. But that's the place to make the connections with people who um, get to know you in a very casual setting. And eventually they will become your advocates. And for me in my career, there have been a couple people who one of them I met on the ski bus to Tahoe who became my guide throughout my career and was very critical for me in going through the partner process, which is a very selective process um, and guided me, told me what I was doing right, helped me figure out how to get through that process. So um, know who the people are and uh, go to the social events, make yourself available and do the extra work for certain people, um, whether it's a night and weekends thing, because you will build credibility with them, which they will return to you. 
terrific answer. Well, well, well said. Tasha, what are your thoughts on this topic? Perfect. I, I love this question and I'm going to, I'm going to try a sports analogy. So bear with me, right? So throughout my career, I've always believed in having a starting five, right? When I became a professional, they became my board of directors. So who are these people? For me, they are people that are already in the roles are, or are or the people that I aspire to be. So what does that mean, right? It gets back to what Cara was saying around, if you have a journey, if you have a path or you know where you wanna go, it's best to be with, hang around and soak up, right? The, the energy, the experience and the time from those that are already there. So I believe, I often say this to my friends that iron sharpers iron, right? It's actually, uh, it's actually from the Bible. It's, it's a, a verse from Romans. And what it talks about is being in the space and in the circles of those that can enrich your life and, and then, you know, conversely, you enrich theirs. So when I think about my starting five, there are people that are, some in some cases, they know me intimately, in some cases, they don't. But either way, they are the people that I can go to for very specific reasons. Some are skills driven. Some are definitely networkers, right? They are in leadership roles and they're in the highest ranks of, in my case, my firm. And so they are people that can give me almost a, um, a compass as to what's happening above me. And then I'm in a very senior leadership you know, role now, but then there are also people that can help me navigate in places that, I, that I'm not and be the advocate as it was said earlier to speak up for me when I'm not in the room. So that's very, important, actually strategic. Don't feel like it's, um, it's empty because you have to build relationships with these people, but be very intentional about the people that you choose to, to invest in and almost pour into you and vice versa. Now, the other part of that is your circle of friends, your network, right? The people that you spend the most time with. These are the people that will look you straight in the eye and tell you what you need to hear, right? Even when you don't need to hear it. Right. If you have a bunch of girlfriends to tell you what you want to hear, I'm not going to say they're not your friends, but I'm going to say find that one <laughs> that's going to challenge you a little bit because that's important. One of mine is actually listening right now on the line, and she sharpened me up earlier this week in a way that I needed. Right. And so when you think about your circle of friends, have them be people that love you enough to tell you the things that you need to hear when you don't want to hear them. Think about that as well. I think that also creates a better person, it creates a better citizen, but it also creates a better professional. So I know I feel like I gave you probably starting five and you know a bench of folks, but that's what it feels like. They all have purpose and they all have meaning and you have to give to them in the way that they will give to you. I love that, I love that question. <laughs> great, great comment. I, I love the idea of, hey, listen, we all like people around us that tell us what we wanna hear. But at the end of the day, we need people to tell us what we have to hear, right? So, so outstanding comments. Uh, and Talitha, uh, that question to you, please. I love everything that the women have shared. And I'm going to share a couple, maybe just a couple quick stories about how um, having an advocate um, is beneficial. But also just keep in mind that sometimes, ladies, your advocate hasn't even met you in person yet. And your advocate can also be someone who has seen your performance and will advocate on your behalf without you even knowing. And two people who did that for me was Coach Joe Compagni and Dr. McNeil. When I was getting you know, rejection letter after rejection letter for one reason or another from colleges, I was like, well, I'm just gonna go to this community college here in Long Island. And um, my advocate was my high school coach who had reached out to coach Joe Compagni because he was, um, their wives were roommates in college and coach Joe ended up coming to attract me. He's like, okay, well, I've heard a lot about her. Her performance speaks for herself. She's got all of these records and triple jump and the 400, the 800, the, I mean, the list went on and on and on. And then coach Joe came to see me perform and I bombed. I mean, when I talk about, I bombed so bad. I mean, you know, for, the track and field athletes, you know, you get three tries for triple jump. And I, I, um, I missed my mark on two of them. And I had one kind of mediocre jump. And then I said, you know what, forget it. I, I know I'm not going to be able to, this was my one last shot. 
you know, and this was in, in August. <laughs> I still was just like still waiting. And you know what, Coach Joe, he said, you know what, your track record beforehand speaks for itself. So I know that you can do this. So my advocate didn't know me. My advocate looked at my past performance and said, I'm going to take a chance, but then it's up to you to show up and perform because you don't want your advocate being like, okay, I spoke up for you and now you're not able to perform. So um, Dr. McNeil was also my advocate for me. She went to bat for me. Every, every twist or turn of my career as an, a student athlete, when we were faced with something um, that was really hard as a student athlete, where we were mistaken for um, some robbery suspects, five women in a vehicle, guns pulled out on us. She was our advocate. She went to bat for us with the police department to say, these are my athletes. This is not happening on my watch. She was our advocate. She spoke up and, and made sure that the Fraternal Order of Police got involved when we were mistaken for men who had had uh, committed a robbery across the street from the infamous White Castles. I'm not sure if it's still there, but um, I say all of that to say, even in the workplace, um, I, I did not know that Dr. Maya Angelou would be an advocate for me. She lived in Winston-Salem. I was one of the last people to interview her and she was someone who I looked up to. And when I met her, I you know, put out my hand. I said, oh, Dr. Maya Angelou, my name's Talitha Vickers. It's so nice to meet you. And in her voice, she gathered herself and said, I know who you are, Talitha Vickers. I watch you every evening, Miss Vickers. I love your work. And I, I mean, I just fell out, you know, and I, you know, to have that moment, but she behind the scenes was advocating for me within the community that I had just gotten here. You know, I didn't know anyone. And she was putting, she was planting little seeds for me along the way. So I did not know her as an advocate, but we were able to develop a relationship and spent Thanksgiving with her and her family. And, you know, through that, I wanted to find a way to continue her legacy. So I created the Dr. Maya Angelou Day of Reading and, and just to continue her legacy. So I say that to also lastly say, you then have a responsibility to be an advocate for someone else because someone's gonna do it for you, but you also have to make sure that you continue to pay it forward, ladies, because that's how we all win and that's how we're all uniquely united. Terrific answer. Um... And Talitha, you can add um, impersonating, impersonating uh, to your to your resume. Well done, well done. Um, you know, I had a couple more prepared questions, but but we're going to take a little a little turn, right? And because you all have such an amazing story, right? And you've all overcome challenges, whether it's personally or professionally or whatever the case may be. And what I want to do is go one by one. And I want you, like, you know, to look at the girls um, that, that are on this, uh, that are graduating high school, and, and look at the young ladies that are graduating college, and put yourself back in their shoes. Knowing what you know today, what advice would you give them as they embark on the next phase of their career? We talked about some of the things, about mentors and about challenges and being early to the room and making your voice known, and, you know, you have a, a, a 10,000 people behind you and believing that, but Think through, you know, you know, what you've learned in your life and what would you say to you graduating high school or you graduating college, like so many of the young women are on this call today. So let's start with, in a random order, let's start with Cara. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many ideas coming to mind, but I would say that, um, you know, it's very basic. You really just have to, uh, sometimes there's a little bit of fate involved in all of our uh, career paths where someone steps in and gives you an opportunity that feels like it might be bigger than you can handle. Um, and you just need to take it and then use all those people we talked about, whether it's your team of five, whether it's your close friends or what have you, whether it's Google but go and figure out the information you need and step into the greatness that is being presented to you because fate has brought that to you. Um, and sometimes it's hard to be bold, but continue to be bold, continue to use the basis of being an athlete and always persevering and um, 
uh, amazing things will will happen. Uh, I remember that uh, the CEO when I was at Corn Ferry um, asked me at the last minute to come to London to present. Um, well, I lost my passport. And so uh, I couldn't find my passport the day I was supposed to leave for London. I was such a nervous wreck. I went to the state the downtown to uh, get my passport. I was rejected to get a same day passport. And um, finally, this guy saw me in the lobby and said, you know what, I'm a man of God, I'm going to help you out. And he got me my passport that day. And I was on a flight to London that night. Um, so just keep going because sometimes it'll feel over, but somebody will step in and you will get to your destination. Great comments. Let's go over to Monica. Uh, yeah, if I put myself back in the shoes of those young ladies, I just, I think I wanted everything so fast. Uh, so maybe my biggest challenge was just being patient. It takes time. So just keep pressing forward keep learning and growing and keep pursuing whatever your path is and it will come in time. Uh, one of the fun things that I did get to do, Chris, that you mentioned was I got to be on um, HGTV with the Property Brothers. And before that happened though, probably 10 years before that happened, I had auditioned, I had tried and I was turned down. Looking back, I know now that I just didn't have enough experience to be in that position to be in front of the camera, but at the time it didn't feel like that. Uh, when I did get on HGTV, I went to the first open call and they told me no. Uh, I actually drove down to North Carolina. I was living in New Jersey, we were at Monmouth at the time, drove down to North Carolina because I thought, oh, it'll be easier to get it in my hometown. No, they told me no. So they had open calls uh, a couple of weeks later in, um, in New York City. And I thought, well, if it's New York, it's going to be a lot more people, but it's going to be harder. But I tried anyway. Um, and that's when I got in. It was at the encouragement of our friend and partner, Summer Rice, who's on the phone or who's on the call now. Uh, she was like, you just got to go for it. And I did. And that's when I was able to get on the show. Uh, they later hired me to do a show. And I was able to just, it opened up a lot of doors and other paths for me. But it just took time, patience, and really persistence. And it, that was a, it's a lesson that I'm still learning, but I know a lot more now than I did <laughs> 20 years ago. Terrific, thank you, great story. Tasha, let's go over to you. Uh, I'd say for me, um, you know, so, so many things I would tell young Tasha if I had the opportunity to dial back. Uh, but in addition to everything else I've heard, I think, I think it's about, um, you know, have no fear, but um, don't be foolish, right? So um, I rush in, I still rush in to things. Um, but again, I talked about being strategic earlier, right? So, so make sure that the decisions that you make are good ones, right? And you may not always have your pulse on what that looks like, but don't have the fear to go to London, right? Don't be afraid to go to New York instead of North Carolina. Don't be afraid to step into. All of you are athletes in your own right. And at one point you probably said, should I, should I try out? Should I, should I not? Should I? And you went ahead and did it. Um, we feel a lot of, we feel very confident in things that we know that we do well. I often push myself to spaces where I'm really not sure, right? Because for me, that's where I grow. So don't be afraid to step into the thing that feels unfamiliar, might even be impossible. You'll be surprised at how you will perform on the other side. Great advice. And batting cleanup, uh, last but definitely not least, please. Um, you know, Chris, it's such a good question because it's so hard to put myself in their back in their shoes right now because they're it's so different amid COVID nineteen. You know, so I I say I applaud each and every woman who has an athlete on this call who has persevered above adversity. I don't know what I would have done if my championship meets and you know going to states you know, was canceled. That would have like just totally crushed me. Worked and worked and worked and worked. But I would say this: do not be defeated. You know, and Dr. Maya Angelou, I go back to her. She you know she has this quote that says you know you may encounter many defeats but you must not be defeated. In fact, 
in order to rise above, you must face those, those defeats and those challenges. Um, so you know who you are, so you know how you can rise above. So even in the midst of everything that's going on, um, if I had to put myself in your shoes right now in the middle of a pandemic and wondering what my future holds, do not be defeated. Just know, like the other ladies were saying, that things might take a little bit more time because of the circumstances right now. But also don't be afraid to fail. You know, don't be afraid of if one door closes, there, there's another opportunity that is, is on the horizon that will be better and, and just right, just perfect from you, like Monica was saying, like there, it was a perfect opportunity when she surrounded herself and, you know, kept persevering, that perfect opportunity opened up and also surround yourself with people who would be willing and who, you know, in a room full of opportunities, they're going to say your name. So it's not that friend that's going to be like, oh yeah, girl, you look good. No, you don't. It's not going to be that friend that's always going to say, yes, 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 yes. Go for it. Knowing that, oh my gosh, she's going to jump off the cliff and fall on her face. Surround yourself with those people who are going to be such key players in your life that will say, oh my goodness, oh yeah, Talitha, she's an author and I know this person and that person and we're, how, how you can use your network around you to build in stages to exactly, exactly where you want to be. Great answer. Uh, all four of you, terrific answers. Uh, out, outstanding from top to bottom. So thank you. Um, let's go over to the last story. We have a couple minutes. We went a little over, but it's obviously completely fine. Um, Jessica Cavanaugh, are there any questions that showed up in the chat room that you'd uh, like to throw out there? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to start one from our women's golf coach, Michelle Malia said, can you talk about a time that was your most challenging and how you handled it? All right, so let's throw it out to whoever would like to answer that question, because I think we may have a couple questions. So we'll go, whoever would like to uh, raise their hand on that one. I'll, I'll jump in really quickly. So uh, one of my most challenging, um, if, you haven't, if you haven't realized yet by my personality, is that, um, you know, I love meeting people. I love getting to know people. Um, you know, I have a, a, a pretty good heart about most things. I feel like I'm easy to get along with. Um, I had an amazing opportunity um, in a job that I thought, oh man, I'm gonna retire from this place. Like, this is amazing. Um, and uh, loved the, just loved everything about the job, but had a, a, a major conflict with my boss. Never ever happened to me in my entire career. I can't even say that I met a person I've never, like I've disliked, right? I just don't have that kind of personality. Um, but we were oil and water, oil and water. I tried to mix that thing up. I tried to do the best that I could every day and it was challenging. Um, and, and I'll say on a very personal note, I ended up being depressed. I ended up gaining weight. Like it just really took a toll on me because it made my, my day to day, right? My day to day really difficult. Like I struggled and I wake up with this smile every day and I struggled. Um, I ultimately ended up leaving that job, right? I left that job. It was one of the hardest things that I had to do. But that, in that experience, I learned that if I can't be happy and love what I'm doing every single day, I'm not doing it. I made that decision. I can get into details. I can get into why we all have our examples of why. But for me, I have to love what I do. And I've made that choice every day. If I'm doing something that doesn't light me up, if it doesn't align to my passion, then I can't do it. Right. I have I have a, a place of peace about me. And so it, it, it's community. It's it's church. Right. It's whatever. But if it doesn't agree with my spirit, I won't do it. And, and so I say and that's different than the challenging space that I was talking about earlier. It's about committing yourself to what you love and then aligning everything in yourself in your life around it. So that 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 is a bit of an advice that I'll say about that challenging situation. I don't have days like that anymore and I never will because I choose to do what I love every day. And that's what I challenge for each of you. Chris, can I add to that really quickly? Yeah. Um, 
One example for me was actually when I was on the swim team in, um, I, I was on the swim team because I almost drowned and my parents were like, you will learn how to swim. So um, we, my brother and I, we were competing on two different swim teams. One was a city swim team and one was a private swim team. And the private swim team, um, we, our entire swim team was just pretty much predominantly black and um, actually it, black and Hispanic, but um, we got to the meet. It was our, our home meet. And we heard our coaches like just going back and forth. And I had never heard my coach yell outside of move, delete the go like in the water. But I was just like, what is going on with, with coach Trotman? And all the parents, so the, the, the parents took the girls in the locker room and the, 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 dads took the boys in the locker room and we knew something just wasn't right because by now we would have been warming up. We would have been like stretching. We would have been in the pool. And um, fast forward, um, we saw the other team getting on the bus and leaving. So we're like, oh gosh, what happened? We're so we're pumped up because this is one of the better teams, um, private swim teams. And our coach hit us with the harsh reality that they didn't want to compete against us because they didn't want to swim in the water with people who were black. And that was you know, as the age that I was, I was just so taken back by that. But I tell you what it did, it lighted a fire in all of us as a team, because then when we made it to states and some of the other team members made it to, um, to the junior Olympics, we had to compete against them and they wanted that title. So it made us have that fire um, and say, that's that team that just said, they're not going to swim with us. They're not going to swim with us. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and we got in the water and we kicked their butt. And our coach pulled us to the side and said, you remember that team? They're here. They're here. You're sharks in the water. Rise up. Like, let's go. And like, really have, like, I get goosebumps talking about it now because we swam our heart out. And I say that to say there will be times of people based on the color of your skin, based off of just pure ignorance, will just say, oh no, we don't want to compete with them or they're afraid or they just have whatever the reason is find that fire you know and that let that fire drive you forward because we took home all the medals that day okay because we were so intentional about we remembered you know how that made us feel and we acted on it so i just wanted to share that that quick example i i think they should play that before every mama sporting event right in the locker room before the game like there's no pregame speech that can that that can top that. So so well done, well just outstanding uh, and motivational. Uh, by the way, um, Jess, let me go. Uh, one more question from uh, from the audience. Yeah, absolutely. So we have another one from Claude Taylor, and I'm going to make it a little general. Um, this is for anyone on the panel. What do you now know now about what it means to be a success that you wish you knew as a student in college? Should we go to Monica and Cara for that one? Monica? Sure. Or Cara? Sure. Um, I'll kick it off and then Monica could bring us home. She's so good with that. Um, I will say that um, I, I didn't know about writing your own story. And uh, I often look at the Beyonce and Jay-Z story. Um, you guys all remember that famous footage of Solange having the fight with Jay-Z in the elevator. And everybody wondered what that was about. And I just remember that after that, both Jay-Z and Beyonce released albums and told their story in their way. And why do I say that? Because you will have a jagged path in your life. You will have times where you feel like you're low and you're kind of shy or embarrassed about telling that part of your story um, because you feel like it doesn't represent the best part of you. But just know that we will all have ups and downs in this jaggedness to our career path, wins and losses. And the most important thing through all of that is to write your own story and tell your own story with your receipts. Don't let somebody else and their opinion of you drive the story that you have about yourself. And that will be key to your success of when people ask who you are, for you to be able to say that clearly and confidently, and for you to just um, always know that you are valuable, that you will make mistakes, that you will have downs, 
but you can define yourself by the ups and you can define yourself by the downs because you learn a lot of lessons from failure, um, just as many as you do from success. So I just call that the Beyonce and Jay-Z, write your own story and uh, make millions off of your, your albums if you can do that too, because that was, that was a cool move. So that, that would be my input. So true, so true and well said. Monica, how about you bring us home? I don't know if I need to add anything to that. Cara, you killed it. Um, I love that analogy. What do I know now that I didn't know then? Uh, let me just say, I didn't know anything then. Um, I'm from a tiny town of 8,000 people in North Carolina. Uh, I just, I didn't know anything about, the only definition that I truly had for success is like just more than what my parents had. Um, so I, I didn't know what that looked like. And it took me years to kind of go through the different channels to find out, okay, this is what I want to do. And this is who I want to be. I worked for about five years after going to Carolina before I went back to design school, uh, because it took me that long to figure out what I wanted to do. And design is my passion. It's pretty much been the root of everything that I do. So whether it's designing a room, an environment, um, and what I've found over the years is that being creative is what makes me, it, it kind of, what's me, it, what, it's what makes me go. It's what gives me energy. And that is my definition of success. When I'm being creative, um, I feel successful. And right now, Cara and I are in a business with Summer Rice, and we're creating our own story now. We've launched this company that's this whole different kind of energy um, because it's a product as opposed to my life, which has been about service. Uh, and it's so cool that we're able to bring this product to so many women. And our product is focused on women and it's all about women. And it's all about making women's lives better and more beautiful. So still creating. So that's what I've learned over the years. Outstanding. <clears throat> all right, so before I turn it back over to Marilyn to close things up, uh, I'd like to say a few things. So on behalf of Morgan Stanley and uh, as a trustee of Monmouth University and a father of a collegiate female athlete to the panel, thank you. Thank you. You represented uh, everything that this event embodies. It's about strength and leadership uh, and confidence. Um, and, and you all are the epitome of that. So congratulations on your success and best wishes on your continued success. So thank you for spending some time with us today. And to all the female athletes, the leaders, uh, in high school and college for being recognized by your coaches, by your, by your school, congratulations. And we wish you nothing but the best of luck in the future. With that, uh, I'm gonna turn it back over to Marilyn. Chris, can I quick jump in? Um, sure. Thank you, Chris. Um, and before Marilyn formally wraps up this wonderful event, I wanted to take a quick moment to thank our Director of Athletics, Dr. Marilyn McNeil, for all that she has personally done for women's athletics. Marilyn brought awareness of National Girls and Women's in Sports Day to Monmouth University and, has, and, and this event has evolved over her career. She will be retiring this June and I cannot think of a better event to recognize such an influential woman in athletics. Thank you again, Marilyn, for all that you have done and you continue to, to, continue to do for women everywhere. Thank you. I was in charge of the script and that wasn't in my script but thank you for your kind words. Uh, this is obviously my very favorite event. Um, I was so moved by everybody here, but th that last panel, you so killed it. I'm sure everybody that was listening to you wants to have another hour, but we need to appreciate everybody Sunday afternoon. But you were wonderful, and I wanna thank everybody for your contributions. Uh, and as I, as I walk away, this might be the very best one. And I'm so proud. I'm so proud for, for women all over. Um, you know what? The theme of this day is uh, lead her forward. And obviously, I want to ask all of you to keep leading her forward. Uh, you will look out for this. You're going to get this little memento, which is called a no contact hook. Um, in the mail shortly, thanking you for your registration. You're also gonna get a, a coupon for the Lure Life, uh, which Monica and Kara are involved with. 
So I really do want to thank you for your participation today. I hope we're all inspired to have a great Sunday and a great week and a great year. Thanks again, everybody. So long.